The headlines moved pretty fast for Gerald Ford in the 1970s. In the fall of 73, Richard Nixon tapped him to succeed Spiro Agnew as vice president. Then, a few months later, the Watergate scandal came to a head. I shall resign the presidency effective at noon tomorrow. Vice President Ford will be sworn in as president at that hour in this office. Nixon's announcement sent the nation into uncharted territory. Never before had a U.S. president resigned from office in the middle of his term. The 25th Amendment laid out how the transfer of power would work, but staff needed time to prepare the White House for a new first family. And so, at least for a little while, President Ford would live at home and commute to the Oval Office. Home was 514 Crown View Drive, a quiet residential street in the Clover neighborhood of Alexandria, Virginia, where the Ford family had lived since 1955. The neighborhood soon turned into a spectacle. Reporters gathered in droves as well-wishers packed the sidewalk, eager to catch a glimpse of the new president who, for many, was a longtime friend. Neighbors set up a makeshift press office in their garage. Meanwhile, Alexandria police and the Secret Service stood guard in front of the Ford's home. I, Gerald R. Ford, do solemnly swear. I, Gerald R. Ford, do solemnly swear. When Ford took the oath of office on August 9, 1974, one excited neighbor called it the greatest thing that ever happened to this country, adding, we can look forward to settling down and leading normal lives again. Of course, President Ford's life was far from normal. But in some ways, his routine seemed familiar to many. As new First Lady Betty Ford wrote in her memoir, at 7 a.m., the President of the United States, in baby blue short pajamas, appears on his doorstep looking for the morning paper, then goes inside to fix his orange juice and English muffin. After breakfast, Ford's motorcade commuted eight miles up Shirley Highway to the White House. Each evening, like thousands of other government workers, the President returned home to the suburbs, where he found an ever-growing collection of moving boxes. After the divisiveness of Watergate, Ford's everyman actions, along with his words, struck many as a welcome change in tenor. My fellow Americans, our long national nightmare is over. Our Constitution works. Ford's stint as the commuting commander-in-chief would be brief. On August 19th, 10 days after he took office, the new first family officially moved into the White House. But after two decades of memories on Crown View Drive, the move was bittersweet. As Betty Ford remarked years later, leaving the White House wasn't nearly so much of a wrench as leaving our house in Alexandria. For more memorable episodes from Washington area history, check out our Boundary Stones playlist and subscribe to WETA PBS on YouTube.